company's information security. Okay? And we will do this audit against the ISC squared's 10 domains of InfoSec. So our game plan is first to give you an executive overview of each of these 10 domains so that you'll have a little bit better understanding of what happens in the domains. Okay, the second is to give you some questions uh, that you can ask, that you should ask when you do a manager's audit uh, to determine in what ways your company is in compliance with ISC Squares 10 domains and where the gaps are. Okay? Then we encourage you to perform that manager's audit. Okay? For most of you, you are already in a company. And you, either your company or you have a client company uh, that you could um, ask these questions and perform the audit. Some of you who are listening to this lecture are not currently employed. Maybe you're a full-time student at the university or whatever. Uh, in that case, what I would encourage you to do is volunteer your services to go find some company that you have friendly relations with in the area and ask them if they would mind if you came in and did this manager's audit. Uh, it would be an enormously beneficial learning experience for you to do so. And then we need you to document the shortfalls that you discover and present these to the appropriate senior management for follow-up as they deem best. Now, about that last point, um, let me show you some information here on this next slide, some advice that we have to give you. We're not trying to turn you into some sort of InfoSec cop. All right, and so... Um, be careful in the way you document and present your findings. You don't want to become obnoxious. You don't want to alienate yourself uh, from management. Um, you, so you want to show due tact and good judgment as to how you conduct the audit and then to whom and how you present your findings. Okay, if this is done properly, it's intended to help you better understand the scope of what's required to do modern information security responsibly. Okay, and then the second thing is to help your company uh, by strengthening their due care and their due diligence postures. Okay, so let's talk about domain number one. Domain number one, security management practices. All right, the, this first domain covers how the corporation should identify its assets how to determine what the relevant protection of those assets should be, and finally, um, figuring out what the budget needs to be for attaining whatever confidence level your management has determined they need to have um, in order to um, address any potential threats um, and mitigate those threats. We will focus on security principles risk analysis, and then a proper understanding of what policies, procedures, standards, and guidelines are, and how to implement those, uh, at least in concept. All right, so uh, we start <coughs> with security principles, okay? These security principles are known as the CIA triad. CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity and availability. Um, and just to show you, it's a triad, they added a fourth part, um, accountability. Uh, so although um, a triad only has three elements, um, they, they have come to understand they really needed four here, so this triad has these four elements. And so with the addition of accountability, this is oftentimes referred to as CIA squared, where the A now, there are two of those. Okay, a corporation determines which element or combination thereof of the CIA triad it will focus on. Uh, now, of course, it's got to follow all, all four of those, um, but they're trade-offs, um, and you have to determine which you're going to focus on. So let's consider these one at a time. Um, the principle of confidentiality ensures that a reasonable amount of secrecy is in place to prevent 
unauthorized disclosure of sensitive information. Okay, what do we mean by this? An example would be um, if you have uh, customer credit cards um, on your hard drive, uh, you have to take adequate protections to ensure that just not anybody in your company has access to that credit card information. Okay, so it, to do this, you have to first of all determine who needs to have access to the credit card information and then provide those people and those people only with access to that information. Furthermore, to make sure that they do not access that information in any uh, way that's not necessary for their business so that you wouldn't give them access to maybe all of the information, only those portions of it and only at those times uh, that they absolutely have to have it for their business. So a company that focuses um, that on that as their primary security principle uh, would be um, a C uh, company uh, in terms of the CIA triad. Ensuring confidentiality is attainable through encryption of data, implementation of access controls, and employee training on proper procedures. All right, so if, you're, if you are going to focus on confidentiality, as the primary focus of your information security, um, then you would have to have management uh, policies and procedures and guidelines uh, in place um, that talk about how you're going to do encryption of data, how you're going to do implementation of access controls, and how you're going to do employee training on proper procedures. Okay, the second uh, security principle is the I, which stands for integrity. Integrity is the assurance that information and systems are accurate and reliable. What does that remind us of? Well, Sarbanes-Oxley is a prime example of uh, a focus on integrity, data integrity, that when the data gets entered uh, by the person authorized to put the data in, the data is not in any way adjusted or modified um, at some later date by some other person because they didn't like what the data said. And that's what Sarbanes-Oxley is all about. Uh, and Sarbanes-Oxley is an example of uh, uh, the I or the integrity uh, security principle. Okay. All hardware, software, and communication systems need to be fully integrated and allow data to pass without alteration. Okay, so if this, if this is the primary focus of your security, uh, then you become an I company uh, relative to the CIA triad. Okay, and then um, the first A, availability. Uh, this prevents disruption of service and productivity. All systems and networks should perform at consistent levels of performance, and it's attainable through... Uh, avoiding such things as single point of failure, implementing business continuity, installing redundant mechanisms, shielding systems and networks from environmental variables, and other such um, procedures. Uh, now, if we'll stop and think about it for a minute, it should be apparent that the more you're concerned about confidentiality, the less you will be concerned about, about availability. And the more that you're concerned about availability, then the less you will be able uh, to be focused on confidentiality. So uh, we see in the case of those two elements that there are trade-offs to be made. And that's why we say that you will, in, in your security uh, principles, you will most likely select one of those that is most important to your company and focus on that. It doesn't mean that you will exclude attention to the other two, um, but, but one of the three will be your primary focus. And then when we talk about accountability, this element is often added to the CIA triad. Um, it allows for the tracking and auditing of information systems, and individuals need to be identified and held accountable uh, for their actions uh, when that's true and when that's very important uh, to the company. 